Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and to a brand new video. It's been a little while since I last uploaded, I think it was at the start of this month, and I did think that I was going to be uploading a lot more during August, but I honestly had so much work that I've been getting on with. So today's a really rainy day and I didn't really feel like working, so I thought I would get on with editing a brand new video and also edit a few other videos so I can have those lined up throughout the next few weeks. So for today's video I am painting Eleanor Neal. If you don't know who she is, she is a true crime YouTuber here on YouTube obviously. <laughs> She's a true crime YouTuber and her videos are honestly just so brilliant. They're so, so, so good. If you like true crime, like cases about serial killers and uh, murders, and I know that's really morbid to say, but it's really, really fascinating. And judging by her subscribers and her views, a lot of people find this stuff really fascinating. If you're into that sort of stuff and you like real life cases and serial killers and things like that, definitely go over and check out her videos. Like honestly, they're so, so, so good. Her videos, they go into so much depth and you can tell that she does so much research into her videos. So normally when it comes to these time lapses, I tend to talk about what I'm doing in these paintings, like techniques and stuff. But for this particular video and since it's on the theme of kind of tr true crime but except my story here isn't true crime it's paranormal and I know those two things aren't exactly the same but I know a lot of people who have interest in true crime tend to have a bit of an interest in paranormal things. So I thought for this voiceover, I'm going to talk about a few paranormal things that I have personally experienced. I know that some people don't really believe in the paranormal. People are free to think whatever they want to think, but these accounts that I have experienced, I know a few other people in my family have also experienced them too. There's a little bit of validation there. But like I said, a lot of people have their own opinion, so if you want to to listen to this feel free to go ahead if you're not really into like paranormal things you know feel free to mute this and just play some music on top of something and just watch the time lapse either way i hope you enjoy this video so for a bit of context this particular house that i used to live in i'll just refer to it as my old house we lived in for about 15 or 16 years and obviously within that time a lot had happened it was a big house to begin with despite it being a bungalow but we had it worked on and extended so it was an even bigger house and at one point there was nine of us living there. You're probably thinking nine people, that's a lot of people, but honestly the house was that big that half the time you didn't know where people were. But everybody had their own room and stuff so it wasn't an issue or anything at all. My family is quite spiritual and the paranormal spirits, energy, etc are things that we're quite familiar with like we're open to the idea of it and also after all of this had happened it only just cemented in our brains that something more exists other than just the people that you see. When we moved into the house, things were completely fine and we honestly hadn't experienced anything that was out of the ordinary or spooky. And I believe in 2007 or 2008, we had our house extended and also the first floor built too. With that in mind, um, I've heard that you can disturb what's underneath the land when you build on top of it. I don't know if that is the case here. I thought that was just worth a mention. It has popped up in my brain a few times after that. I'm just like, hmm... Did we do something that kind of disturbed the ground? Disturbed some spirits maybe? I don't know. And then things started to happen from around 2009. It started off with small occurrences like we would feel a gush of cold wind go past us or hear our names being called. I remember one time my sister said she heard a name being called by our mum and it sounded exactly like her. She walked out of the room saying like, what, you called me, you know, what do you want? and no one was there. I don't even think my mum was at home and so my sister went back to what she was doing and I think she had a YouTube video on and she thought okay maybe what she heard was you know what she was listening to on her you know in the YouTube video so she went back to re-listen over it but there was nothing that sounded like her name being called and me personally I'm quite a night owl so I tend to work during you know late nights and that's just something that I've always done and I remember around this time I 
it was probably like one o'clock in the morning and I think majority of my family had gone to bed or they were just you know in their own rooms I was working in I think I was working in the living room and I heard my name being called and it sounded like my dad and I turned round but no one was there I think my dad was fast asleep as well so that, that was a little bit spooky and after that happened I was like nope I'm going to bed they usually say that cats and dogs can see things that we as humans can't and we repeatedly saw that our childhood cat Nemo would occasionally get spooked by random things so in the house the extension that we created was basically two new rooms downstairs which was a second living room and a sort of a gym and an area for my mom to put her sewing machine where she would she was stitch in clothes and outfits and stuff so that last room with the gym and the sewing machine that was like an l shape there were windows in the second living room so from the kitchen you could kind of see through the windows that were in the second living room and you can kind of see a little bit into the sewing machine area and we had patio doors as well that were near the sewing machine so in the summer we'd basically had the doors open and it led out to our back garden it sounds a little bit confusing but essentially it was a big square but they were divided one was a square and one was an l shape around it this gym sewing machine room is where we actually saw a lot of stuff and so did our cat nemo we would put a lamp on near the sewing machine like every evening it was just a bit of light in that room rather than putting on a whole ceiling light Anyway, we would see shadows as if they were moving across the back and towards the sewing machine. A few of us had seen the shadows and because there were nine of us in the house, we thought it would just be one of us in there. So we would go and have a look only to find no one was in there and no one had stepped foot in there. One time it was just me and my sister at home. I can't remember where everyone was because it was the evening but I think they'd probably gone out either, um, you know, I think they were probably going to see like family or something so it was just me and my sister at home and I remember this so clearly. We just made some food and we were walking out of our kitchen to go sit in the main living room and, you know, to watch TV and eat we saw that our cat Nemo was going absolutely crazy like her eyes were so big as if she'd not only spotted something but you know she looked really really spooked she was stood on the back of the sofa looking towards that second living room and she was looking back at us as if she was trying to tell us that she could see something this had happened quite a few times where Nemo would be staring in a particular direction but it wasn't that she was just plainly looking she looked like physically scared and her body language too it just showed that she was scared it was just really freaky and really creepy when she would see something and she would look directly at you like she would look directly at your eyes and her eyes would be really big it was just really really creepy I think around in 2007 we had also lost one of our cats called Nemo me. We think he was hit by a car but we found him on our front porch. It was so heartbreaking like at that point I think I think I was 15 and I'd never lost a pet before but for years after this we would occasionally feel a brushing against our ankles like how a cat would brush up against your feet and we'd assume that it was Nemo but we would look down expecting to see her but she wouldn't be there. She'd be fast asleep in another room or she'd be laid down somewhere. We've had that a few times and we'd also had um, as if like a cat has jumped onto the bed but nothing will be there. I remember we would often feel like someone was either walking upstairs or they were upstairs when really no one was. So my sister used to work from home she was a beautician and a makeup artist and she would often have customers come over for beauty treatments so she was home most of the day one day she was preparing for one of her clients to come over so she was in and out of her beauty room just preparing things sorting things out and we had a computer that was at the bottom of the stairs which was like our computer so me and her would use it she came downstairs and about to sit down to use the computer and in the peripheral of her eye she could see something actually moving upstairs and heading towards one of my brother's bedrooms. Everyone else in my family was out at work. I think I was at university at this point. No one else was at home and she saw this thing moving upstairs, like just 
as if it was walking. Back when I was at university, I commuted for my first two years, so I'd be waking up at about half six in the morning, get a lift with one of my sister-in-laws so I could get the train. I think she used to work somewhere near the train station, so on her way to work, she would just drop me off. So I'd be waking up early and quickly doing my makeup in this large mirror near where the stairs are. So if you looked in the mirror, you had a clear view of the stairs and straight behind you was the dining room and then the kitchen. One morning while I was doing my makeup, I glanced over behind me and I just managed to catch my sister-in-law's legs going up the stairs, which made sense because her bedroom was up there and I thought maybe she was just grabbing her handbag or something, except I walked into the kitchen and my sister-in-law was there. I was so confused and I asked her like, didn't you literally just go upstairs? And she said she'd been in the kitchen making her breakfast for at least 10 minutes. So whatever that was I saw, I have no idea what it was, but I definitely saw legs going upstairs. So my last little story is one that follows on from the last one. This happened after I graduated from university and I went back to living with my family. I think this was in the summer of 2014. Remember how I said that the room that was like half a gym and half a sewing machine room and it had patio doors that led to the back garden? So it was a sunny day when I was sat outside on our patio just reading a book. I think it was Tina Fey's autobiography. I think I think that was the book that I was reading. So how I was sat, the doors to go back inside were on my right side. I think I was just sat facing the sun. I was sat outside just reading, you know, for, I don't know, like a couple of hours. And I looked up to the side of me and I managed to catch a glimpse of legs walking through the gym room and walking towards the kitchen. I didn't think much of it because I thought my dad had got back from work and saw that the patio doors were open and he just come to check who was outside. After a few minutes I went back inside and my dad was back from work but he said he hadn't stepped foot in the second living room let alone the gym sewing area. The only other person who was home was my granddad and he would usually just stay in his room and nap during the day but if it was actually him you'd be able to hear him because he was quite heavy handed and he had a walking stick so clearly you'd be able to know that it was him. I have no idea whose legs they were and I remember seeing them so clearly. Like it was just as clear as day. They just looked exactly like the legs that were going straight upstairs. I do have more stories including a Ouija board experience that I definitely will share with you all soon. I know this video is a little bit different to what I've done in the past but I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any paranormal experiences or any sort of ghost stories that you would like to share feel free to share them in the comments. If you like this video feel free to like and also subscribe to my channel for more art videos, more art vlogs, time lapses, and that sort of stuff. Thank you for watching and I shall see you all in the next video. Bye!